Hey, I'm Grump. I'm not so Grump. And we're the Game Grumps. Danny. Welcome. Uh, ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? You were going to tell some Harley stories. Yeah. So when I was, um, when I was 23, I worked at a Harley Davidson shop. Yes. And uh, I had a buddy named Andy who, and Andy was my age now, 36. Mm -hmm. And, um, he, uh, he was a great dude, and, uh, he was always, he always, he kind of took me under his wing, and he was like, You know what, kid? You fucking live your life. You do your thing. And every day we used to, uh, in the morning, we used to get, damn it. We used to, uh, get a burger, a double-decker burger with a fried egg on top of it. Oh, that sounds awesome. It was disgusting, and, um... Because there was a greasy, like, Jersey diner next door to us. It sounds awesome. So we, we, and we'd just eat those burgers and go into a goddamn coma, and, um... For work. For work, yeah. That's cool. And, and just Harley drivers, uh, would come, Harley riders, I should say, would come in and be like, What's going on, kid? And I'd be like, I've never been on a motorcycle, and I'm all fat now from this burger. <laughs> Just a weird coma the entire day, but he was really cool. Like those guys, like gave me so much good advice. Uh, advice. Yeah, I was gonna. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was gonna say so much, so much good advice. Advice. Um, yeah, he was like, listen, you, you. Um, I know you feel like you've got plenty of time, but your twenties, they're gonna fucking fly by. And I was like, you know what? I'm glad you said that, Andy, because now. Now I can, uh, really kind of focus and, uh, and really enjoy it and make sure, like, I, I, I take advantage of every second. And they fucking flew by anyway. Yeah. And my 30s are flying by. Time just flies. Oh, yeah, there's no, there's no way to fucking protect you, against you, that shit. Yeah, it, it just goes. Just enjoy your life. You, you know what, you just live you, your you life. You just fucking live your life. He was awesome. And then there was another, um, guy, uh, named Mike, who was an Indian, um, Oh yeah, we were talking about an that. American, yeah, 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 American, he, yes, or yes, he was woo woo Indian, not Red Dot, and um, <laughs> the uh, he, yeah, so he was Native American. He was fucking awesome, and like we used to after work every day, we used to go and uh, smoke weed in the New Jersey Transit parking lot, and um, I, he was he was just you want a spirit quest? He was just <gasps> oh. you, go. <gasps> you got the master sword, a blade for a true hero, a fire beam when you're full health. Yeah, and that reminds me of something my woo-woo Indian friend Mike said. Yeah. He was like, uh, he said, never take your exceptional health for granted. And I always remembered that, because that is the best advice ever. Oh, I, yeah. I don't know if he would appreciate me referring to him as woo-woo Indian Mike. <laughs> so, apologies, Mike, if you're watching this. You know I love you, bro. But that's, that GameStop actually used to be, because it was a small chain. Right. It was one of the lesser chains. EB was the big one. Mm-hmm. Um, and GameStop had old games, and I remember going to GameStop and being like, Fuck yeah, man, I'm getting some old games at GameStop, I'm gonna play some NES games. Did you ever work at any of those places? No, I worked at a Blockbuster. Oh, that's right. I worked at a GameStop in, in, on West 4th Street in New York. What? Yeah. 2000... 2009, I guess? Like the first year of Ninja Sex Party. I know was, you worked at a comic book shop, but... Yeah, I worked at Midtown Comics on 45th. Um, but that was... I got fired from that. Um, because the, the guy running it wanted to give his friend a job. Oh, what a dickhole. And he was such a dick. Fuck you, Brian. <laughs> not, not that Brian. Yeah, not, not you, Ninja Brian. I mean, fuck you too, obviously, but like... Yeah, no, the, the... It was one of those situations where it was like, Yeah, today is your last day. Like, it was like the total fucking dude from Office Space moment. Yeah. And, uh, I was like... Shit, man, why? And like, I was super upset because, like, I had friends there. I still have friends who work there. Um, great people work there. Like, my boy Demetrios. Yo, what's up, Demetrios? Demetrios Fragascata. Shout out to my boy Demetrios. Doesn't get any more fucking Greek than that. Damn. Yeah. But he, he's. Does he pop his collars often? Oh, I wish. I, he, he should. Um, he's writing a comic book now, actually. What? What a badass. Yeah, Millennials, I think it's called. Holy like, crap. Yeah, yeah. Um,. But yeah, he, he's awesome. Jose, like, Sean, oh, Serge, so many fucking cool people at that store. So, like, I was super bummed, uh, when it happened. But then, um, uh, that time off, uh, and by time off, I mean, uh, crippling unemployment. 
gave me more time to just fucking concentrate on creating NSP. And then I met Brian like a few months later. Oh damn. Yeah, and my friend Demetrius. Blessing in disguise. Yeah, yeah, he came he came up to me like the next time I was in there and he was like, "Dude, uh getting fired from this place was like it's it's going to be the best thing that ever happened to you." And I was like, "That's really nice of you to say." And it actually turned out to be true. Damn. Yeah. Yo, that, he was a regular soothsayer. <laughs> you should what? I don't know. I'm I'm not entirely sure what a soothsayer is. It's like a fortune teller. Oh. But in in my in my experiences, a soothsayer is usually like sort of like a like a witch, you know? Yeah, that's what. Yeah. Like, oh, come into my land. I will tell you the secrets. That's more along the lines of what I was thinking you were talking about. Ah. And I was like, I'm sure he'd be happy to know that you consider him some sort of gross old crone-like witch. <laughs> <laughs> Crone. Yeah. <laughs> Damn you, Fallout Boy, with oh, your seductive oh. rhythms and harmonies! Oh wait, didn't they do that one song? Dance, dance, we're falling in love to hurt my does, head. That does sound like them. Live all the life you won't live. Yeah, this was the weird move. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like, what is he saying? I used to sell uh, comic books to the drummer. Oh, really? Yeah, he would, uh, when I worked at Midtown Comics in New York. What did he read? Uh, shit, I don't remember. He would, he was like the top type of comic, he was legit. He was like, he was not a poser fan, um, cause he would come in, uh, and buy like stacks and stacks every week. Uh, oh. and he had a really, really attractive girlfriend. Of course he did, he's and, in a fucking rock. Well, that was the thing, cause I, I didn't put it together that he was the drummer of Fallout Boy, and, uh, we, uh, it, you may not get this because it's a football term, but we have a thing, uh, when a guy outkicks his coverage, as they say, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. That his girlfriend was just a little too attractive. B batting outside his average. Yeah, exactly. That's the, uh, and, uh, she would look very bored <laughs> while he excitedly leafed through his comics. Yeah, probably. He, he was a cool dude. He was super nice. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And that made me, made me, made me like, fall out boy more, <laughs> excuse me. Muntog. <laughs> Muntog. Yeah. Did you, um, did I ever tell you about Metal Mondays? Nope. Aw. Uh, that was when I still worked at Mugshots in Philadelphia. The little coffee shop. Me and my buddy Josh. Oh, Mugshots. That's cute. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a great name. Not your usual lineup. That was the, uh, that was the tagline. Really? Adorable. Um, it still exists, but it's in a different location, different people, different, different world now. But, um, I used to work there, and, uh, like, the only times it would get really intense was, uh, at, like, six in the morning, you know, like, when the early... Whoa, you... Get that monkey! Get that monkey! Anywho, the, uh, my buddy Josh and I would come in at 5.30 a.m. when we'd have that shift, um, and we'd have Metal Mondays, because that was the day. So, like, we'd go to sleep early on Sunday, wake up Monday morning all excited, uh -huh. like, the, the sun hadn't even come up yet, and we would just fucking blast Mastodon and, like, <laughs> other assorted fucking, like, insane metal bands. Um, yeah, would you? Yeah, and you know what? Their face-melting guitar solos not popular with the 6 a.m. Uh, espresso latte crowd. Yeah, you know what? You can go fuck themselves. It's right. your day. Are you a sour Sammy right now? I'm seeing it on your face. It's, uh, you look like a sour Sammy. It looks like he's wrapped in, like, solder. Y yeah, oh god, how much fun was it to solder shit when you were young? And uh, just watch, it, like- It wasn't, it was my job. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I just watched- I just like watching, like, metal turn into, like, Terminator 2 liquid metal. Oh yeah, that is kinda cool. It is super cool. I actually did it for a hobby for a while, too. I you worked a, as a- what were you soldering for a job? It was my first job, with my dad. Oh my god. Tell me what year that was. Oh, it was the year, like, Mega Man... It was the year that the... Uh... The Nintendo-themed Game Boy SP came out. Whoa. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> um... So, you so can, like, 2000? look that up. 2001? I don't know, it was a long time ago. Yeah, that- that seems- that seems about right, maybe. Because in 2001, I was living in Israel, um, working in a fucking factory, making plastic wheel rings. So, yeah. so, like, there's a chance that- oh, damn! Wow, that thing's not fucking around. 
um, there's a chance that at the same time that you were like electrically soldering shit, I was in a fucking like stone grinding factory creating plastic rings. And somehow <laughs> those fucking hard dri uh yay, those hard driving man paths led to this doofy job. <laughs> I love it. It's true. Well, uh yeah, I don't know. It was just the first job I could get with my dad. That's what I bought with my first paycheck was uh, that Game Boy Advance SP. No and shit. Then, uh, I got Mega Man Zero. Played the shit out of it every day during lunch. God, man. Remember how exciting it was to get like $20, you know? Like when you first got your job and you were like, oh my God, like 20 bucks for like three hours work. That's awesome. Yeah, that was crazy. And now, I mean, as Ninja Brian says, I don't take a shit for less than 75,000. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Totally kidding. Uh, um, yeah, I, I, I did that soldering thing, and then I got really into soldering, and I started, uh... I started getting into, like, modding. So I modded... Solder modding? Yeah. <laughs> well, I was also into, like, arcade controls and stuff, too. So I was trying to build a, um... A, like, mini-desk arcade cabinet for the Neo Geo Pocket Color. Whoa. Um... And I got pretty far, I just, uh, couldn't figure out the screen. Because it used, like, some weird proprietary wiring. But the point is, mm -hmm. I made a front-lit Neo Geo Pocket Color. Ooh! Uh, I stole a... I stole a, uh, front light from a Game Boy Advance SP, uh, version 1. And I took it out, and I put it in the Neo Geo Pocket Color, and rigged the power to... to power the... the thing. That's awesome. Yeah. I, uh, I was very proud of it, and then I gave it to Nathan Barnett, because he wanted Aww. it for a video. He's a sweet fella. Yeah, he's cool. Truly outrageous. I fucking love Jim. Me too. Have you read the new comic? Samesies. No, I haven't. It's good. It's showtime synergy! It's pretty good. I think I told you that at the comic book store I used to work at, there was this really cool gay guy. Um, and like, every time the comic, uh, store would like, like, it'd be a- a release day, uh, of new comics, and everyone would start pouring in, he'd be like, IT'S SHOWTIME SYNERGY! <laughs> That's a gem reference, if you don't get it. I wanna meet that guy. Yeah. I wanna meet that guy. Cause Synergy is like her cyborg friend that turns yes, into gem. Yes, it's computer, right? Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> I'm just gonna go home. Was yeah. it like quitting a job? Where you're just like, You know, I don't wanna do this anymore. Yeah. And you just fucking stop doing it. God. <laughs> just call him and you're like, that's how I quit. Could you a, imagine? A job once. That's how friends leave. I did. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I quit a job. I fucking, I just called up that morning and I was like, I don't, I don't want to come in. Yeah, there's nothing I want to do less than like do this job now. So I'm going to not do it anymore. Yeah. And then that's she, cool, right? Well, she was like, <laughs> it was just one of those things. It was like a cartoon. I was like, I don't want to come in, and she was like, okay. Did you- oh, okay. I thought you died. Can you find someone to cover for you? And I was like, no, I mean, ever. Yeah, yeah, like, for good. And she was like, oh. I was like, yeah, it's nothing against you. Yeah. I just don't- I, I don't mean, I guess it's it everything anymore. against you. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was a nice boss. It just- it was a shitty job. Fair enough. Well, um, what job was it? It was Blockbuster. Oh. Yeah, she was Dude, actually Did you really quit nice. your Blockbuster job? Yeah. Bro, talk about fucking... You could have been in at the ground floor of something really special. I know. Their stock is through the roof right now. Their stock is non-existent right now. <laughs> Are they not a company anymore? Well, they're not publicly traded. I think they still exist, though. There's like, I've seen a Blockbuster in LA. But it's just because it's LA and it's fucking movie central here. Like, I can't imagine there's more than five in the country anymore. Well, they have like an online service still. Uh, where they were like... Netflix was like, oh, we the mail-in service, and then Blockbuster was like, we do that too. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna all in on the mail-in service, and then Netflix was like, we do streaming too, which is wildly more popular now. And Blockbuster's like, fuck. <laughs> ah, well, we're really awesome at the mail-in service. We, we sell uh, Kindles now and Nooks, <laughs> just like all the new technology. Kindles. We 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 sell uh the the Pi phone. It's- it's like an iPhone, but made of pie. It's actually just pie. We sell pie now. We're a- we- we're a dessert store. Look at you, five dollars, just floating in the air. <laughs> waiting for me to grab you and use you at GameStop. <laughs> Whoa, Aaron. Sorry. 
Um, I gotta figure out how to get because this is the tricky one. I was talking to like um, a businessy guy, and he was like, "So how long have you worked at GameStop?" And uh, I. I could, I, I knew, some part of my brain knew he meant Game Grumps, yeah. but I was like, shit, I worked at GameStop, too. And, like, it just didn't register with my brain, and I was like, uh, from, like, 2009 to 2010? He's like, what the fuck have you been doing for the- what? <laughs> 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 Caused a lot of confusion. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Though I- you work for GameStop? Yeah. We should just change the name. Yeah, yeah. Wait, for the last episode of Game Grumps, how, whenever that is, like many, many years from now, we should call it GameStop. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then get sued right out the door. <laughs> I'm sure I'll remember that gag. Me too. It's not even that funny. So you know you're gonna remember it. Ooh, jeez, well. I'm a harsh on myself. I know, I guess Where's so. that? Oh, there it is. And... Bang! Jimmy's. Bang! And we're not talking about sprinkles. You know Jimmy's? Well, yeah, we've had this talk before. Oh. Uh, I only knew the term Jimmy's because I worked at an ice cream shop for my first job. And some people, foreigners, foreigners to New Jersey, came in and called it, excuse me, called them Jimmy's. And I was like, what do you mean? And they're like, little rainbow Jimmy's. And I was like, oh. But that's like a New England thing. I you guess mean it's a very specific New England thing. Sprinkles. Oh, ah, shit. shit. Well, there went your fucking head start. It's oh, cool. that's cool. not good. It's cool. It's cool. Don't worry. Is it oh, cool? Shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, and a rat feasted on my corpse. <laughs> I used to tell you, like, um, or rather, I used to uh, do remote antenna setups for uh, when I worked at a radio station in Jersey. WDHA, Jersey's Rock Radio. Did you and, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You told me that? I believe I did. I think I did it on the show. Um, so, but so much I pay attention. That's okay. Uh, someone listened, hopefully. <laughs> And yeah, so one this of the- This is the fucking Game Grumps wiki. He never, ever, ever said that. <laughs> never said that. He's a liar. One of the, um... Uh, one of the shows I did was Blue Oyster Cult. And so it was me and just, like, like the redneckiest crowd ever. And, like, uh... Like, just this dude, like, with, like, just all fat, sleeveless shirts, like, grody mustache. Got like two kids on each of his shoulders. I'm sorry, I and I, ha I have to interrupt you. Oh wait, I, I have a face slapping machine. Oh my god, you do! <laughs> yeah, blue yeah. cult. Oh yeah, no, it was just this redneck, and I just re have this image in my head of him like yelling at Blue Oyster Cult the entire time to play various songs. He was like, "The kids want to hear Godzilla," and he's all drunk. And uh, Blue Oyster Cult was like, "All right, fuck it." They were cool. Wait, like somebody on stage? No, no, he was just a drunk dad in like the front row. Pretty awesome. <laughs> the kids want to hear Godzilla. Yep. All right. Yeah. yeah they were like, "Fuck it." <laughs> <laughs> we like that song. Yeah, Godzilla. It is. Hence why we wrote it. I like them. But I think it's because I quit my day job yesterday. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, it won't be yesterday when this airs, but like, um, I I quit my day job because we got to a point where uh, we can I can do you know Game Grumps and Ninja Sex Party and Star Bomb. Uh, full time and and pay my bills and live, and uh, it's fucking amazing. And walking out of that place was the best because, a they gave me a, a slow '80s applause clap. Really? Yeah, yeah. I started walking out and uh, my buddy was like, <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone like joined in. It was really really special. And uh, that's awesome. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. And as I walked you didn't out, tell me that. Well, I'm telling you now, like. And the coolest thing about it was realizing that, like, the the moment I walked out of walked out of that place, like into the fucking California sunshine, mm -hmm. it was the first moment where, like, you know, however many years out of college, more than a decade, like, I finally reached a point where I can do like fun shit and music for a living full time. Yeah. Like, oh my god! I never thought I'd get there. It's so this is fun to you. This is super fun! Are you not having a good time? <laughs> I just always got the impression that you hated my guts. So. No way! This is, <laughs> this is a dream. This is a dream that whose name I dare not name. <laughs> <laughs> my mom was actually all in favor of, of getting me out of school. Because I, yeah. I, I dropped out my third year, I think? Of, of, of high, high school? school? Like, b before I even started it. So I did two years and then I dropped That's out. That's such a fucking social, um, like... Yeah, and my and like, my mom was very much like, from. "You're not learning anything there, are you?" And I was like, "Nah." And yeah. like, I was being honest. I wasn't just like trying to get out of school. Yeah. 
but um she was like all right well then we'll get you out of school and that was that that's interesting and then man. and then i but i i I don't remember clearly enough, but I, I think that she was, I think they were pretty like, you need to get a job now. Um, yeah. So I did. And like, I worked for my dad and then I, uh, I like worked at Blockbuster and shit. Oh, like, I did a few shitty jobs like that too. Yeah. I got yeah. jobs all over the place. Worked um, at uh, Hungry Jack's, which was a uh, nice Burger King in Australia. And uh, I worked at a, I got fired from one job. I remember, or at least like I didn't, not fired, but like I, I didn't care about the job enough and they I didn't make it through the job period. <laughs> I, you yeah, know, I think it was terrible. it was an interesting situation yeah. too because like I I sort of felt like yeah. maybe I had something to prove um, yeah. because I I had dropped out. Like I feel like if I had gone through all of the school and then got a shitty job, mm -hmm. then I'd be like, well, what was this all for anyway? You know, like I went through yeah. all this school and now I have a shitty job at Blockbuster. Whereas like I dropped out and I had a shitty job and I'm like, okay, well I deserve this. I'm gonna make you, the best. Yeah, how of are you gonna it. make it better? Um, right. And I think that taught me a lot about like work ethic and like yeah yeah uh, you know being good at your job even if it's not like that important. Mm. Um, and I was I was always very good at what I did when I worked shitty jobs. I always tried to do my best. I, I was not. <laughs> <laughs> I really wasn't. I, I I mean I I I had I still have horrible concentration. I've gotten better, but like. I mean, Jesus Christ! I I just hated jobs that I, I like didn't give a shit about. I tried my best, you know. I I was a terrible fry cook. Oh terrible, yeah, terrible. Put me out to wash the fucking the the restaurant because it was garbage at it. Oh man. I mean, I wasn't terrible. I I just fucking clearly didn't want to be there. Did you get your returns on your fries? Were they like these fries aren't good? Ugh, they're not as good as they usually. I did are. actually get my hand burnt by my manager. Oh and my god! He what? Made me like keep... purposely? Uh, I don't know. Was he like punishing you? He like turned. He was like, "Is that how they do it in Australia?" I don't know. He like turned around with the fry, like like uh, I don't know what they're called, like the like the big, scoopy thing. Yeah, the yeah. big grid label. And then it was like boiling, broiling hot, and he like bashed against my my wrist. And he's like, I was like, ah! And then he like put this like shit on it that's supposed to cool it. But then he immediately made me go, go back to work on the fries, and I could only <laughs> around use one the hot hand. grease. Yeah, so yeah. I could only use one hand because the steam was like burning my hand. It was like. Oh my fucking god, I can't believe he made you go back to work. Yeah, like, it was, yeah, that was a really, wow. I had a really fucked up manager. I had this Irish manager, the guy was such an asshole. I remember my dog went missing, and he was like, can you work an extra five hours? And I was like, uh, actually, I kind of want to go home. My, my dog Phoebe, she's, she's missing, and I want to help my parents find her. And he's like, I ran over a dog last night, what color is she? <laughs> oh my god, what an like, asshole. I, excuse me? Like, I, yeah, anyway. Fucking, wow, fuck, fucking fuck, fuck working fast food. That was that was the worst. I think Bruce Springsteen lives in Florida. He may do that now. Because when I worked at Blockbuster, right, he had an account there. Oh shit. Yeah. What movies did he rent? Philadelphia. <laughs> 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 the live concert of Born in the USA, 84. <laughs> yeah, I, This I is always out. <laughs> I don't I don't think it's like such an old account. I don't think it has record. I think yeah, well, that's what was happening? But I did print a card for myself under his name. Oh, it's. I don't fantastic. know if that's like for if that's like a legal. Pretty like, sure it's not legal. Mm, that's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, but pretty sure blockbusters don't exist anymore, so you're in the clear. <laughs> pretty sure you're not gonna lose your job or anything. You know what? I do see them in LA though. Like, there's still a couple floating around. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Because people here like movies more than in other places, I guess. Have you ever checked the stocks? Of Blockbuster. Um, oh, like, like the stock history? No. It's like a horrifying plummet. <laughs> it's like one hundred dollars, and then at the very end, it's like one cent. <laughs> oh, it's so sad. Yeah, they're never coming back, man. Well, Netflix. Netflix just. N Netflix came in and did to Blockbuster what Blockbuster did to like every mom and pop video store. Oh yeah, definitely. It's just that's just how. Business is a war But they had total control or whatever the fuck it was called. A monopoly? Where it was like half Netflix, half Blockbuster. Where you would like, they would, you would ask for a DVD to be sent to you, and then you could return it to the Blockbuster store. Really? Yeah. And then, and then you could like pick up a movie there with your membership. Oh, that's interesting. And the thing was, I worked for a store that was like a franchise and wasn't like a corporate store. Right. So when that program started, everybody was like, Oh, here's my movie. I'm gonna get another one. And we were like, we don't do that. And they were like, what the fuck? Yeah. We did the. It's like, it's like going to McDonald's and they're like, one Big Mac, please. And they're like, oh, we don't have those here. Yeah. Yeah. 
So why would we? At the time, I was like fucking idiots, but now I'm like, why didn't we? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's you, stupid that they advertise it and then you go to a blockbuster and they don't have it. Yeah, no, absolutely. But uh, that's true. When people are yelling at you, even if they're totally right, and you're in customer service, you, your first instinct is to be like, you know what? Uh, you should suck dicks. Yeah. That's, that's that's how I felt like every day of my life when I worked retail. Yeah. Actually, that's not true. I was a pretty nice guy. Was working retail your worst job? I don't know. I think working information at the kennel club. Oh no. Probably my worst job. That sounds like a bad time. Oh man, I don't know. Working at Disney was my worst job. Oh yeah. Because everyone was mean to me. That's unfortunate. Yeah, everyone that worked there was mean to me. Oh. So. It's not a place of unicorns and rainbows the way one might think? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it was just my position. But, like, there were some dudes that I met that were, that, 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 like, warmed up to me near the end. Dude, you fucking cleared one meter by a bitch ton. Well, that's what happens when you're fucking awesome at Katamari. I had a, um, when I worked at Blockbuster Video, oof, I had a coworker who was just, like, the coolest person. And, uh, she, she just had, like, balls of steel. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> she was, like, a heavy smoker, and, um, she got pregnant, and, like, the minute she got pregnant, and, like, found out she was pregnant, she just quit. Yep. Just, like, and I, I was like, how did you do it? And she was just like, I, I just, I can't smoke when I have a baby inside me. Yeah. And, like, she didn't, she was always, like, upbeat every day. She didn't have, like, the withdrawals or anything, but she was, like, a heavy smoker before that. Yeah, it's, a lot of times it's... Uh, easier to do something for the sake of someone else yeah. more than it is for yourself, you know? And, like, a lot of my friends are having kids now, um, and, uh, you see it. Like, you see how your life instantly becomes not about you anymore. Mm, and yeah. that's weird. I'm not ready for my life to not be about me. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you noticed, I play video games for a living. <laughs> I think that's a pretty understandable emotion. It's like... Ugh. It, this it is kinda, hard. Once it shifts into that direction, it shifts like that forever. Yeah. Until you become like 80 and then you're forced to have it only be about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you're like, I don't want, no, don't stay with me. Need the prunes. <laughs> Bring me the prunes. Go live your own life, not my. Oh, God, this is sad. <laughs> this, is so, this is the saddest grumps ever. <laughs> Here's something else you might not know. Uh, everyone who works for us gradually becomes more gay in their interactions because we are always just getting weirdly gay <laughs> with each other. You know what I mean? It's true. It is, it's totally true. And like Vernon, we just, uh, I don't think you were here for this, Aaron, but we were, oh yeah, you were right there. God damn it. Uh, Vernon, Vernon, who, uh, has recently come on, on board, um, helping us out with various projects, uh, from Hot Pepper Gaming. Great dude, known him for years. Um, not gay. And neither are we, for that matter. And yet, he's lying on one of the beanbag things, face down, and just his butt's right out there, and I was like, I'm gonna smack that butt. I just fucking reeled back, and I fucking really laced into him, I was like, ah! Like a fucking full-on jump-down smash on, uh, like, open palm to butt, and, like, I feel like when he first joined the show, he would've been like, dude, what the fuck? Um, but now he was like, oh, no, we don't have an HR manager, I can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking hilarious. And, uh... And now that I've said it on the show, uh, he'll certainly be hearing about that <laughs> from people. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Looks like he made a poor life decision. <laughs> well. In, in being funny in a moment. Yeah. Well, you've made a great life decision in smacking dad ass. Yeah, well. I, I... I like smacking my friend's butts. I mean, that's the only reason I hired him, honestly. Really? Just smack smack he had a firm... Oh, I can just cross supple. it. Okay. Wow, Aaron. <laughs> well, it looked broken. I don't know. <laughs> Well, the, the thing was, I used to work at, like, I, I used to work at Midtown Comics in New York, and, uh, that was 2009, I guess? Yeah. And they would always play the same, uh, radio station, and All the Single Ladies by Beyonce was, <sighs> that was the hotness. That was the new 2009 hotness. Right. And so, like, I heard that song probably upwards of 20 times a day, every day, for, like, eight months or however long I worked there. Put your hands up! 
uh, 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 uh. I don't remember the any I just remember the put your hands up. Yeah. If you like it then you should have put a ring on it. And that's all I remember too. I liked it. Yeah. So you liked Susie, so you put a ring on it. Did you could you imagine walking into somebody's room and they just have rings on everything they own and they're like, I like it all! I, I like these things. What am I gonna do? What, what can I do? Not put a ring on them? Oh. Not according to Beyonce. Yeah. <laughs> So you get, I mean, to be fair, like the first episode of Game Grumps wasn't very good either. Is that right? Yeah. The Kirby one? Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's so frantic and like, and even the first episode with you was like, yeah, really frantic and like. Well, that you know, yeah. You, it's like you have good memories of it because it was like, oh, I was hanging out with my friend Dan. But no, like, I I remember it as God. I can't remember if I ever talked about this on the show or not. Maybe I did, but like, when I look back at those early episodes, the Punch Outs and the Super Mario Two, I can hear in my voice, like the how, nerves. yeah, just how badly I wanted to do a good job, you know, mm. because like, um, because John is such a good performer and like a tough act to follow, yeah. and like, because I didn't want to blow it for you and Barry and Susie, and like suddenly you guys are out of jobs because I sucked, you know. So like it, it was super. Well, plus I, I like, I mean the pressure was on. I remember I told you I was like, you're you're probably gonna be hated. <laughs> oh yeah, there there was no. But but that's the thing because like I did those um, those uh, those Mondo episodes. Like I, I was a spokesman for a cartoon company called Mondo, and nothing against Mondo, they're a good company. But like they had this idea, um, uh, at one point. To do like 60 pilots for um, for a video, uh, or, or rather for their channel, um, whereas like what works on the internet is kind of the opposite. Like you have dick figures and you have happy tree friends, and like just roll with those. Like the the ones that work are what people want to see, and just keep giving them what they want, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but they were like, let's parlay this into like a hundred new shows, and then just throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. But they needed someone to like put that messaging out there, so they asked me to do it. Um, and I was, I was very sick at the time, and I needed like um, money for like medical drug bills. Money. Yeah, you no, know, yeah. yeah well, drug money, it, yeah, right? in a sense, yeah, pharmaceutical drugs, and um, and so I took the job, and uh, I was also very happy to take it because it. Um, uh, you know, it allowed me to come to LA, which is something I needed to do to try to make Ninja Sex Party happen. Mm -hmm. And it directly led to Game Grumps. But like, all of this is like, l a long-winded way of saying like, it was an idea that didn't exactly work well with the fans, it was hard to get across, and also, like, it's a cartoon network that suddenly had like, this guy on it, uh, that nobody knew, um, doing live action stuff trying to like get across what these shows are so it's a very tough position to be in and um, And I just became like very very disliked on that uh, channel mm. um, And it got a little bit better as time went on but like still it, it was a, an uphill climb But it kind of like oh the big key you did it. Yeah, but it kind of got me used to how it feels to be hated on the internet Oh, you know cuz ninja sex party like Ninja Sex Party was like kind of liked off the bat, you know, but it also had a very small fan base So it was like <laughs> bless you. It was like it these... wasn't rubbing up against anything. It was just something new, right? Right. It was its own thing It wasn't like something already established that suddenly I was just there, you know So when you asked me to join Game Grumps, I was already used to it, you know um, I, I was like well here's something that's already established and now I'll just be there and people are gonna be like what the fuck, you know um, and that certainly did happen, but like it also I'm also glad in retrospect that it all worked out the way it did because Even though it was a much bigger scale than the Mondo thing I knew that you know the hatred passes and the people that Like it is what it is like it you know, I have nothing to do uh, With you know John and his decisions and all that and so it was just like all right uh, this is what it is, and if they hate me, they hate me, and th those people that can't deal with it will move on, and uh, maybe new people will come in and all that. So, it, it, it was just this, uh, 
it's a very strange time in all of our lives, you know, and it was. I, I think it reflects in those episodes early on. I think I really started to get comfortable like a month, a month or two in. I think to me the like, oh, this is good was Mario 2. Yeah, that was early. That was early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, oh, Volvagia! I love Volvagia, dude. Ugh, oh, me too. Finally. I love getting all up on Volvagia. Yeah, get, get all up in Volvagia. Hammering, hammering Volvagia. Yeah. And I, I started to feel better about it too. I can't remember which episode it was, but, it's um... A jackal? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I think it was one of the... Shit, I don't remember. Um, but it was one of the fairly early episodes and John texted me. And, um... I think it was Mario 3. Might have been. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he, he and I have texted a couple of times about stuff like this, uh, to discuss the show and things, and he was just like, I can't think of a better person to carry the torch, and everything like that. And he was like, you totally have my blessing, and I really fucking appreciated that. And I thought that was awesome of him to do. And, uh, and that helped me calm down a little bit too. Because like, you know, if you respect what I'm bringing to the show, and John respects what I'm bringing to the show, and my mom and dad like me, then really what, <laughs> you know, <laughs> everything's okay. Everything's okay. Anyway. <laughs> You'd have to walk around Blockbuster Video. Yes. And fucking f f figure out what mo movie you want to watch, and then go up to the counter, bring up to the counter. Dude, you and, worked and, at and Blockbuster then they, they, Video. I, I, I did. I sure as fuck did. Did you, how did you have to answer the phone? Did you have to say some kind of like dumb thing? No, we were, we were, uh, like a franchise store. I don't know what that means. So there was like two types of store. There was a corporate store. Okay. Which was a store that was owned by Blockbuster Video, the corporation. Oh, I understand. And, and then there was a franchise store that was owned by an individual yeah, owner. A franchise. That paid for the rights to have the name. Gotcha. McDonald's does the same thing. Yeah, so I worked at a franchise store. So they didn't give a shit. Cool. So I'd answer the phone and I'd just be like, Hi, Blockbuster Video. And there were, um, and if it was a holiday, and we were open, then I would answer the phone and say, Uh, thank you for calling Blockbuster Video, yes, we're open. And then they're like, oh, okay. Like, nine times out of ten. Really? Because all they're calling to is to know whether or not we're open. <laughs> yeah, what would they really ask you? Do you have movies? Yes. Well, yeah, yeah, sometimes they're like, oh, how long can I rent it for? Like, do you have this movie? Thank you for calling Blockbuster, where we have movies. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 hold, say that again? Yeah. You, you, wait, 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 hold on. <laughs> I, I must have mistaken. You have... What if last... <laughs> Listen, I, I know you say be kind, rewind. I wasn't kind, I did not rewind last time, and I'm just feeling really guilty, and I needed to talk to someone about it. Well, so we have rewind machines. It's just, it's just, like, it's not even a pain in the ass, it's like, we open up Isn't the VHS- Isn't a rewind machine just a, a VCR? And you hit rewind on it? N well, if you're just, if you're like Blockbuster Video, and you have a shitload of videos to rewind, then obviously you don't want to fucking v v put in a VHS and let it like- So you just, it's just a little tiny machine that you just plug it in and then stop, and then- Oh. And then you just hit a button and it's like, and then you take it out. Oh. Yeah, it's a rewind machine. Anyway, huh? Um, yeah, yeah, it's like it's like not a big deal. It's pretty kind of rewind, haha, that's nice. But if we get it and we see that the spool's on the right side instead of the left side, we're like, okay. And then we just take it out and throw it in the rewind machine, and then do something else for a minute, and then come and put it back in, and that's it. <laughs> like it's not a big deal. <laughs> and, and I wish I could, uh, I could, I could have unleashed this knowledge onto you when it was relevant 15 years ago. It's okay. We didn't know each other. Yeah. Um, and even then, I'd say 15 years ago was a little, uh, <laughs> still a little late in the game. You got a moon! But the you, ocean bottom maze. For anyone that Cold carried guilt treasure. with them for 20 to- 15 to 20 years, it didn't get- we don't give a shit. Really? If you didn't rewind it, it's whatever. Like, who cares? We didn't care. I like, it wasn't I, a big deal. I like that it's a we, still. Yeah. Like, you you felt like you were such a part of the Blockbuster <laughs> team, that even two decades on, <laughs> You're like, man, it was us against the world. Well, I had, I had, I had, you know, uh, people that I'd worked with. Whoa, look at that. Yeah, it's called Secret Stan. I would have never Get found that shit. Get fucking used to it. <laughs> Get on my face with that shit. <gasps> oh, shit. 
Oh, fuck. Oh, my God. <laughs> I used to teach animation for a living back in Australia, and nobody told me that one of the kids in the class had epilepsy. And I was showing him how to motion between a ball, and then he fell over and smashed his head against a concrete ball. <laughs> I'm really serious. And I was like, I was like, why didn't you tell me had epilepsy? And they're like, we didn't know. And I'm like, epilepsy. <laughs> I remember it speaking of working at GameStop when I uh, lived in Perth uh, back in my, my, my old stomping grounds uh, there's a Garden City Shopping Center which is near my place uh, Whoops. had uh, an EB Games there and um, I remember my mom was like you need to get a job and I was just like animating on new grounds and I was like <laughs> but I mean this will be a God, job new one grounds. day mom it's a name I it haven't was, heard in a very mom. long time you should have listened mom <laughs> uh, so I went around and I, I found uh, uh, a oh no uh, but yeah basically I went to this EB Games and I asked I like put in my uh, my CV and I was like, hey, are you guys hiring? And they were like, no. And I'm like, oh, okay, Please? well, can I, it, who's the manager? Can I leave my CV? And he's like, I'm the manager. And I'm like, Is oh. a CV like a, uh, I said, uh, curriculum vitae, okay. like, uh, like a resume. Yeah, you go, resume. Um, so I was like, okay. And I gave it to him, and clearly he didn't want anything to do with me. And I was like, oh. And then, uh, I went back, uh, I went, <laughs> I fucking went back after, when I, like, after, you know, like, living in America for, like, Four years yeah. of being a part of Game Grumps, and then I walk into the store, and the same store that like wouldn't hire me was just like, "Oh my God, it's Russ from Game Grumps," <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, "My That's life's fucking cool. dumb and weird." Yeah, it's, we live we live very very uh, yeah. interesting lives. Yeah, but the the thing with me was like my my uh, my mom's terrible at explaining what I do for a living. I, a, a large portion of uh, my sister's friends and her uh, my sister's husband's family. I think they all think I review games for a living, and <laughs> my my response is like, no, I mean like I'm on. I just say a podcast because that makes more sense. That's that's of, a more familiar term. It's a more familiar term, and it's not wrong, you know. Like yeah. we, it's kind an of audio show with just the we're just happy to be playing yeah. games. Sometimes you may not even be talking about the game, just talking about whatever. And the game. I mean, we're doing that right Yeah, now. exactly. Like you know, so it's it's I, I yeah I don't know, man. It's it's it's. Fucking weird, but I will say my family has been super supportive with yeah. everything. That's good. Man. I did, yeah. I mean, when I, 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 I when I worked, worked at GameStop, I worked there for a little bit, a couple of years. Yeah. And then I worked at UPS uh, for the for like the holidays. Yeah, yeah. And uh, my dad works at UPS. He still does, but he was a truck driver for years. And mm -hmm. me doing that for three months made me realize I never want to actually work hard in my life because it <laughs> sucks and it, it hurts. Yeah, I, I worked at a um, a medical. I, for maybe a week, I worked at a medical warehouse. I was on a trial period thing. Uh, it was like a medical supplies warehouse, and it was so boring, and I hated it, and I was already planning on quitting. <laughs> and then they just came up to me one day, and they're like, yeah, you're done. You know, you're, you're done. You're done. And I was like, oh, good, thank God. <laughs> I fucking hated thank this. Thank Christ. Thank Christ, I have a reason to leave. Because I, uh, yeah, um, it was like depressingly bad. Um, and lots of people work shitty jobs, and I'm- I'm, I'm fucking grateful that, uh, <coughs> you know, I, I'm in a position where I can do what I love. Have you ever worked at a restaurant before, Barry? I have not worked at a restaurant before. I have. How did that go? Me uh, nice. I worked at Pinocchio's Village House at Disney when I was on my college program, oh. and, uh, oh my god, customers are the worst. <laughs> just the idea of customers? Just, just customers in general. Oh, so working at Disney, uh, yeah. man. Fucking puddles, like the floor in the back was just like wet constantly. And like, we were clean around the food, but like for the most part, the food was just like heat and serve. Like, right. the food at Disney has I gotten mean, a lot better since like the 10 years since I worked there. Uh, How I mean, boring. Real me this. D do you think that you had a bad experience with customers because you worked at a Disney park? No, because you know, I'm pretty good with people in general. But like, I think it's because people were on vacation, so they're like in autopilot mode. Because they'd be like, what time is mm. the three o'clock parade? <laughs> And you're like, seriously? Mm. It's three o'clock, dude. My favorite part of like working in the restaurant was I was in the back, like filling drink orders like this. Oh yeah? Yeah, because like you didn't have to talk to anybody. You could just zone out, scoop ice, mm -hmm. and just zone out. And especially because like when I was on the college program, I was working, you know, 12 hour days, not getting paid overtime, working every day of the week except for one day if I requested off. Uh -huh. uh, so having a nice little area where I could just zone out and not to think about anything for a while was great. I've I've only had one job that was 
Medium like, cola, no ice. Uh, me medium cola. Um, earlier at one job that, no that, uh, that uh, I was like talking to people. Most of my jobs have been kind of cubicle kind of things. Yeah. Um, I was working for my college. And Large was... tea with ice. Oh, it was medium. Shit. I must um, say, talking while doing this is very hard. It's, it's, it's Small like... water with ice. Uh, uh, oh, I was wrong. There was another place I worked where I had to make food for people. Um, when I worked at Godiva, uh, Give I would... Give me something. Give me something. I would make, uh, make the shakes for people. Oh, yeah? And, uh... They're not really shakes. They're called chocolate elixirs. If you want to feel pretentious, Whoa. is that trademark? Yeah. Should be. Uh, bacon and cheese only. Wow. Can't uh, do. And I would have to like you know wear gloves, make the drinks. But I made mad drinks, man. Yeah. Like I would take like chocolates out of like the Godiva chocolate cases and like make drinks out of those. Whoa. Like I would make hot chocolate with the like chocolate hazelnut praline seashells, mm -hmm. like shit like that. Oh, so good. Like people would be like. I want a mint chocolate, you know, drink, but you don't have one. I'd be like, oh, well, shit, I'll just take two mint chocolate things out of the case and mix it into a drink for you. Mm. And I would charge them a little bit extra for it, but it was always fucking worth it. And I could never accept tips. Wow. Yeah. That is rad. It's a trap. God. But I made the, like, if I, if I ever went there again, I'd be like, if you, if you go to a Godiva and ask them to, like, mix a thing in your drink, you should do it. I will. Uh, only a couple stores will actually do it for you if they're cool. Uh, okay. Look at my sexual torture devices down there. Wow. Please. Hey, I think your disc is dirty. Try ending the game and cleaning your disc. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. You can't talk to her because your disc is dirty? Oh, my God. It was just one scratch. Somebody got really mad at this and was like, oh, fuck the fucking imp apart. Fuck no, it. I don't think- I didn't see any scratches. I didn't see Probably the you disc. you put in a big, greasy fingerprint. <laughs> no. I worked at Blockbuster once and people would just give back the- they're like, it doesn't work, and it has like mayonnaise on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, of course it doesn't work. It I was gonna say, did you get it. this at a Wendy's? <laughs> Was that a picture of George Washington? You know, oh, I no, it stopped was that, asking questions. It was the mayor. It was the mayor. That's the gladiator. the gladiator. Oh, you want a train? It's just called Gladiator. It's like, it's like when old people come into Blockbuster and they're like, Do you? Do you have the Gladiator? <laughs> Wait, uh, that's that one's Ridley Scott, right? Yes, that one's Ridley Scott. Yeah. It's a fucking good movie. It's like a... There's like this woman that came in that was like... There, there was a movie called Closer that came out. What are you, what are you, Nat oh, Natalie Portman. Oh. There's a film called Clo Closer with Natalie Portman. Yeah. And the, and there there was a woman, an old woman that came in that said, "Do you have the closer?" The closer. I was like, "Oh, you mean closer?" And she's like, "Yes, the closer." It's like, <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah. Old women, man. Yeah, gosh dang, just their elders. I was trying to, I was, I was trying to uh, get get us to appeal got to flabby skin. <laughs> I don't know if any of you guys have ever worked in a cubicle. I've done it several times in my life. It is a god-awful, soul-sucking experience. And uh, if you're dealing with it, I hope you break out of it soon. Or I hope you love it. Maybe you love it. Um, but I didn't love it. I felt like I was slowly dying inside every day. Luckily, I only had to do it for three years. As much as I have a dream job now, um, I have said many times uh, to people who have asked me in person, that um, takes a long time. It takes a long time of like pursuing dreams to kind of like break them and make them come true, you know? And uh, they don't always come true. And that's the scary part. Um, so Brian and I, it's interesting, are of like two different minds about this. Like, you know, you always hear like, follow your dreams and do whatever your heart desires and things will work out. Um, but, and I, I am a believer in that because my life has kind of been an example of that. But Brian thinks that's actually irresponsible to say um, because it's like, don't quit your day job. Like you need your day job. And, uh, and just by a numbers game, things don't always work out for people. Um, so his concern is that like, he would be enabling someone to like destroy their life if he said, yeah, fuck everything, just go for it. Um, which makes total sense. Brian, Brian, I think it's fair to say is a more um, uh, pragmatic guy than I am, which is good because he has a wife and kid. And I'm kind of like, you know, single dude. 
But like, um, so I guess I will say that like, I don't, I don't believe in destiny and I don't believe in fate. Um, I just believe in pure will, you know, um, like just, and like, if you really love doing something and you want to dedicate your life to it, uh, I say go for it, but like, you better be sure that you have the stomach for it. Um, because what it's going to require is several different points where you, where you're like, uh, am I blowing my life? You know, like, am I fucking this whole thing up? Um, that's just part of it. Uh, oh, I'm just trying to get this right. Okay. Um, and that's, uh, that's a tough thing, you know, because like, as you try to like, especially if you're trying to pursue an artistic life. Like, there will probably be a point in time where, um, you know, you see... Oh, shit. Um, so, yeah, the only reason I got on that was because, like, I had to take a lot of jobs in places that looked like this um, in my early uh, struggling musician days in Philly. And then my continued struggling musician days in New York. And uh, so in order to be successful, you really have to, like... You just have to have the stomach to, like, be in that position where you'll see your friends, like, getting high-profile jobs and, like, like quote-unquote safer jobs, I guess, and uh, moving ahead of you in life, and it's painful, and you'll kind of feel like you're getting left behind. That's all part of it, you know? And um, it can be difficult to deal with, but, like, it, it, is, it is so worth it when it actually happens, and... Um, I'm a believer that it that it will happen. The, the last thing I wanted to say uh, about uh, following your dreams and such is that there will be probably about five times um, in the pursuit of said dream where things will conspire against you and you feel like you should just give up and you're stupid and you're wasting your time and it sucks and everything's awful. Um, you just have to keep going in those moments if it's what you really want, if you feel like you have the stomach for it. Because um, the difference between people who do achieve said dreams and who kind of give up before they're achieved is just that, you know, that willingness to push through those moments. Um, and there will be many of them. Uh, so that's what I would say. Uh, go for it. Do what you love. I think you live once. So fucking live your life to the fullest and don't be afraid because all of the best things in life come when you're out of your comfort zone and everything worth doing is scary uh, at first. So uh, I'll talk to you guys later and uh, goodbye and I love you. Okay, see ya. This is the after part when the screen's blue. Subscribe to us or watch more shit. Hooray, I don't know what to say. Oh, fuck, the music changed. Later.